really good teachers who do a lot of project-based activities with their kids really don't just open up the world to let the kids do anything. There's sort of a hidden structure and the kinds of tools you put out for kids to work with actually sort of guide the way they are able to inquire and build and communicate their ideas. What we imagine for the future is sort of a workspace or desktop where teachers can just choose all the different tools they want, drop them into place, go to work, and, and the software takes care of all of the integrations. The kinds of tools we're looking at and developing are ones that allow you to create learning environments, do your own publishing, build things that are in fact are useful not only at the moment, but can potentially be useful to the colleagues in your district and beyond. Peter? Hi. Hi. Uh, listen, I am totally stumped. I have this great unit on growth in nature, but I'm having a heck of a time really driving the point home. Uh, what are you looking for exactly? Well, I've got some great observation experiments, and I've got some great background material on cell growth, but... You're just not sure how to open the lesson. <sighs> yes. That's it. That's exactly it. That's my problem. Uh, you're in luck. I came across some really good time-lapse stuff last week. Worked great with my kids. Here, I'll send you Cyberlink. They've got a whole series of shots like, well, like this one. Just browse through. You can choose the ones you like. This is perfect. Thank you so much, Peter. Listen, I'll see you next week at the district meeting. I'll be there. See ya. The real world's full of all kinds of sounds and actions and colors that, that really turn kids on. That's, that's what really drives curiosity. If in the future we had really powerful mobile devices that would help kids collect those images and sounds and, and work with them, we'd have a kind of opportunity for learning that we've never had before. The real power of these technologies is that kids would have the opportunity to connect to other sources of information, to ask questions, to compare and contrast, to analyze, right there at the moment of discovery. When kids get back to the classroom, they'll be able to share their experiences through powerful multimedia presentations that really capture the, the dynamics of, of the experience they had in the field. They can get their ideas together on their own personal desktops but then distribute their work anywhere in the school or even to remote locations. You know, with a little editing, I could use this footage in our diorama here at the park. What do you think, you guys? Absolutely great. Right. 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 When we had a very small information space, it was practical to think about people going through and indexing at least what they thought were the big ideas and the key concepts. Now where the information space is literally global and includes not just text but images and sounds, uh, the models we've used in the past to do our searches simply are inadequate. So the notion is to develop tools that make it easier and easier to navigate with purpose through that sea of information. Tools that are smart enough, intelligent enough to be sensitive to context. There's work being done with intelligent agents that look at the kind of materials that you, you find and personally value, analyzing them, and then going off, sometimes for hours and hours at a time, paring down the thousands of potentially relevant pieces of information to the few high-quality ones that you really want to spend your time on. Oh, dear Father, it is thy business that I go about. No blown ambition doth our arms incite, but love, dear love, and our aged father's right. So now, in spite of the fact that he kicked her out of the family, Cordelia remains loyal to her father and doesn't stop loving him. Now listen, I put these three clips on the bulletin board. Like Great educators challenge their students with big ideas. Ideas that have to be thought about and researched over long periods of time real advantage to anywhere, anytime computing the way we're thinking about it is that no matter where students were, they'd be able to get back to their own personal desktop and continue working on that project, on that big idea.
Hey, did you guys read a Nakamura article? Get this. He says that maybe Shakespeare didn't even write this play. Scandalous. Yeah, rumor has it it was Sir Francis Bacon. <laughs> See, look, narrowed it down to eight. Ah, that first one looks a little steep. I'll take that one. And I'll take that second one. And you can do the other six. Yeah, nice try, guys. The tools that we imagine for the future are really based on the technologies that we have today. Our responsibility is to make sure that every kid in every kind of school has access to these kinds of tools, not just to enable them to find more data, but to, but to gain real knowledge and to learn how to solve real-world problems. <laughs>